feedbacks that you have for level one and level two assessments might seem general, but still they give you enough direction to areas to pursue and learn again. But with PSM3 and PSPO3 as it's uh, feedback provided by a real, real human who was reading through what you've uh, come up with in your essays. It's extremely specific and uh, probably it's the most valuable feedback I have received through my entire history of taking any exams starting with uh, the high school and moving forward. So this is really good. Yeah, those assessments, I I spent a lot of time grading those assessments um, after obviously I passed them myself. One of the things I like about our PSD community is we all uh, right now generally follow the same path to become a PST, um, even PSDs back from way back when, like myself. Uh, we had to sit assessments, we had to attend classes. So I had to take the PSM3. Back then it was, back then it was the PSM2 because we only had we had the level one and then the written assessment. We now added a, a level two assessment in the middle there, still multiple choice, but I had to sit it as you did. And my experience for sitting it, I don't know what yours was like, but mine was not fun. I did not, in, I did not enjoy it. Um, it was, I was under a lot of time pressure. Um, it was really stressful, but at the same time, I really appreciated passing and the feedback that I had. I don't know what your experience is like, but here was my experience. It's a two hour time box, you got 120 minutes. Um, I think I might've been doing it in a hotel room. I'm, a, I'm a, I was a consultant at the time, so traveling around a lot. So I was in a hotel room. Internet's a little spotty, but it was still pretty good. So I started taking the assessment and I'm kind of moving through it fairly well, fairly quickly. Uh, and then I maybe, I want to say about halfway through, I think it was 36 questions at the time. So I'm maybe, you know, got 20 some odd questions done. And I look up the clock and I've got half an hour left. And I'm like, okay, hang on a second. I'm three quarters of the way through my time, but I'm only halfway through the questions. Oh, the, the sense of panic and fear that, that I suddenly tripped. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm gonna, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this done. So, I just started banging out questions as fast as I could. And they're, they're, these, these are long answer questions. They're essay based questions. So you have to read them and then you've got to figure out what you're going to type. And I just started rushing through. And fortunately for me, it's a mix of multiple choice and essay questions. And fortunately for me, the last four or five questions were all multiple choice. So I was able to complete it in time, but it was only because the last few questions were all multiple choice. I didn't have to come up with essay based questions as a person who grades them. One of the bits of advice I gave, I, I give to uh, people who are looking to take it is do a really good job of time management. Cause obviously I didn't, um, but it is advice that I give people. So I've even suggested having someone who's not you, keep time for you. If you've got a spouse or a partner or something, have them come into the room every 30 minutes and say, Hey, you're, you're 30 minutes in, like, how are you doing? Oh, Hey, you're an hour in, how are you doing to help them help keep on track of, of the questions? Um, because the last thing you want to do is to not answer a couple of them. If you leave one or two essay based questions blank, you get zero and passing when you get zero on a couple of questions is almost impossible. So you want to make sure that you do, um, answer every question. One of the interesting things I learned from grading it is you can tell when you're grading, um, you get a sense for the time pressure that people are under. The first couple of questions, they'll be long, they'll go into a lot of detail, there'll be lots of words in it. And, and the last was, one is one sentence, which is absolutely answering the question. It's extremely precise. It has a couple of spelling mistakes and yep. is, is missing a dot. But and the answers get shorter and shorter and shorter and the spelling gets worse and the grammar gets worse and they start using acronyms for everything. And one thing I did learn is sometimes when the answers got shorter, they got better because they were very focused on what am I, what's the, what am I trying to answer here? What's the key thing I'm trying to answer here? And one of the things that um, I like about Scrum is this idea of constraints and time boxes. 
That's why we have a sprint, right? When you have a sprint, it forces you to focus on the most important thing. And the constraints you have for these assessments do get you to focus on, okay, I've only got, I've got like a minute to answer this. What's the most important thing I can put in? When you think you've got two hours to answer something, you tend to bounce around all over the place and the answers aren't quite as good and they're not quite as focused. So I do remind test takers to really focus on what is this question asking me? What's the most important thing that I could include? Because um, there's nothing worse than if you do have a constraint and there's a question asking you something very specific, you spend, you, you do, you waste your time talking about all this unrelated stuff. There's value in being concise. Um, when you are trying to convey information to someone, the more you say, the more chances you have for people to misunderstand what you're saying. And again, it's that idea of constraints that are, are really important. So there's a great quote, and I'm going to butcher it, but something along the lines, if I had more time, I would write you a shorter letter. Because it's, it's often uh, very easy to just go on and on and on and on. It's a skill to be able to distill things down to being very concise. And it's something that I would suggest your listeners, they work on that. Um, uh, trainers are, at the, at, at the end of the day, trainers are public speakers. One of the things we look for in our trainers and one of the things you should look for anytime you're doing public speaking is conciseness. Your audience has only so much attention. They only have so much time. So focus on what's important for them and deliver it as quickly as possible. Hey, if I'm not mistaken, there was a story about uh, Winston Churchill being asked to make a speech in front of some university students. And he asked, well, how long does the speech have to be? And they replied 15 minutes. So I will need about two months to come up with a good speech. Uh, how yeah. about a 30 minute? Well, I need a month. How about two hour speech? Well, I can do it right now. Let's go. So yeah. kind of conveys the argument. 